Hey everybody, my name is Nathaniel Dodson and today I want to share with you three of my favorite upgrades from the latest Premiere Pro update. That's April 2019 Premiere Pro uh, update and today's video is also sponsored by my friends over at storyblocks.com. They've got some great stock video if you need B-roll, After Effects templates and so much more. I've got a link down in the bio. We'll talk about storyblocks.com later. Let's jump right into this video and get started. Alrighty, well here we are in Premiere. So with the latest update, Adobe introduced a bunch of new updates or upgrades, I should say. There's no really smashing huge brand new feature, but a really a couple really cool things. Uh, number one favorite thing that they've introduced is finally they've introduced guides and rulers up here to the program monitor. So if you select your monitor, see it's outlined in the blue. You can click on the new view menu and choose to show guides and show rulers. Also, I've given them hotkeys of Command R and Command semicolon because that's what I'm used to in Photoshop. It just makes it easy. I don't have to think about it. I can bring them up. I can make them go away very quickly and easily. Uh, just a quick side note, Command R uh, was the hotkey by default. If you click on a clip, uh, Command R brings up speed duration. I just changed that to option R and you can see clip speed and duration comes right up. It's really, really simple, uh, but it's nice to have that. So I can just Command R to bring up the rulers, Command a semicolon to bring up guides and you can just drag from the rulers, just drag out guides. So I can say, all right, I want to place text between his eyes and the edge of his beard chin area and the middle of that is maybe around his mouth grab the text tool and just click and let's call this guy uh, train station Harry uh, because he's at a train station and we'll just pay a little homage to his uh, beard there being Harry and also by the way up in the view menu you can choose to snap in program monitor and what that's going to do is now allow objects and things to snap to your guides so we can snap center we can snap edges we can snap in between there's all sorts of awesome things you can do uh, but I'm going to try to get this guy to snap right there along the line and we would drop his name right there and then maybe go over to effect controls and just drop the opacity of the text to about 50 percent something like that and then I'll align it here on my timeline just because I'm going to be picky. And then, of course, the beauty of the hotkeys, if I can get the alignment to work, the beauty of the hotkeys, command R, command semicolon, that'd be control R, control semicolon on the PC. And there we have our text perfectly, wonderfully, beautifully aligned. I can't tell you how many times I brought up this safe margins thing here, right? So you have... Uh, right up here, not in overlays, but your safe margins. There it is. And it, I would use that and try to align things based on that to just have the rulers and know they're there is great. And a couple of quick other things about them. You can create guide templates, which is incredible. Uh, you can quickly clear the guides or add a guide to a specific area of the video. So you could say, you know, 80 pixels in from the left and then one that's 170 up from the bottom or down from the top or however you want it to work. The guides and rulers, they really, really did a fantastic job with that. Uh, and you can also change the colors of the guides as well, but that's its own little thing. Uh, I, I like the color they are. So that's the first thing, rulers and guides. I really like it. Next up, we've got, well, we've got some industrial grinder video there. Oh, by the way, this is all video from Storyblocks that I'm using here, who is, is our sponsor today. We'll touch on them a little bit later. Uh, I've got this uh, motorbike uh, situation happening here. And let's say we are looking at this video and we realize, uh-oh, this guy is uh, some secret guy or he's wearing a jacket that's still under NDA. We can't show it in this video, so we're going to do the next best thing, which is, for whatever reason, blur it out. I'm not saying this is the most groundbreaking use of a mask track, but this faster mask tracking is what I want to show you here, and just doing a quick blur out, it's just the fastest and easiest way to explain this. Uh, so I'm going to go over here to video effects, right? We've, most of us have probably done this. Stylize, and you're going to find mosaic. Drag mosaic out, drop it on your video clip, and you get mosaic. All right, let's take a quick break from this video and give a quick shout out to our sponsors today. That's storyblocks.com. They've got a massive online library of useful stock video footage that you can use for pretty much any of your projects. I've had a subscription with them for a few years now, and even before they started sponsoring this channel, I've been using them and really enjoying uh, the breadth of different video types and things you could get from them, After Effects templates, background video, all sorts of things like that. And for the price of the subscription, I've never seen the quality of stock footage uh, versus the number of dollars you spend. And once you sign up, you can download an unlimited number of clips from their member library and all the content is royalty free, so you can use it wherever you like. It's so easy. You don't have to think about it. Rest easy, my friends. I've used their video here in a ton of projects, uh, a few of my YouTube videos and other projects that I've used for. If you think that you could use a better stock footage, B-roll, you name it in your projects, consider Storyblocks. They support the channel, and we really appreciate them uh, so much for that. You can use the link down in the description of this video, or simply go to storyblocks.com slash tutvid to see exactly 
what it is I'm talking about. And now let's jump back into this video and finish talking about Premiere. Now we don't want this whole video mosaic like this. So we're going to apply a mask by hitting create ellipse mask. We've got our nice little circle and I'm going to cover this guy up. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to move him forward. I, I want to get a real clear shot of him. So maybe I'll begin right here where we, we can clearly see him and we've got the edge of the sort of windscreen protector there on the motorcycle. And I'm going to move this ellipse in and make it a bit smaller, something like this and just drag it right over him so it's covering him up. And maybe also I would just feather it a little bit. You can just pull out on that little circle, feather the edge of the mask a little. And when we deselect, we're blurring him right out. Now, we want Adobe Premiere to track the mask. And it does an okay job of tracking. It's not the greatest. I really wish they would make the tool a little bit more powerful and just more accurate and better. Uh, but here's what you do. Over here in Effect Controls, we simply hit this little arrow here to track the mask forward. Now, what's the update? Well, the update is this little preview thing. So this used to always be checked on. Well, it, this wasn't even really an option. At least I don't think it was there. I know you couldn't shut off the preview because the ability to now shut off the preview is what makes it so much faster. Um, I just don't remember if it's exactly in the menu because the older versions, you just, you forget, you move on and you forget what it was like, even if it was just yesterday. Uh, so you can, you have the ability to shut off preview. I'm going to scale all the parameter or change all the parameters here, track all the parameters. I should say position scale rotation. Great. And then I can just hit this track selected mask forward. And you may be thinking, does it really make that much of a difference to shut off preview? Well, you can see how quickly it's cranking through this clip. This clip with preview turned on, I timed it, took a minute and 53 seconds. With preview shut off, it took about 18 seconds, 18 and a half seconds. So we can see there, it the tracking picks him up and follows him. Now the problem is, if we go back early before, you can see all these keyframes that just got created. In fact, if I zoom in on this, you're gonna see it's just a bunch of keyframes. Before those got created, there's no masking. The, the mask is not being tracked or it's not tracking the object in the video, I should say. So how do we fix that? Well, move the playhead over here in the animation timeline, move it before your keyframe, and then hit this next keyframe button so we get right to where the tracking begins and then use the backward arrow. And again, I have preview shut off. So it's going to zip through this really, really quickly. And you can see here, thankfully for the video here, the tracking worked. And you're going to have times where the tracking just doesn't work well and it's annoying and frustrating. And it's just, I guess, still part of uh, Premiere Pro and their uh, tracking software or tracking algorithm or whatever it is. It just sometimes does a nice job. Sometimes it doesn't. The whole point here is though, we now have the ability to shut off the preview and that's going to save you a ton of time, uh, depending on the complexity, the size, the duration over which you're tracking something, it can really, really be helpful. Now, you may ask if it's so fast without preview, why would I ever want the preview? Well, because with the preview turned on, you can see before all of the tracking is finished if this mask gets hung up back here in the crowd uh, or flies off somewhere else and starts tracking the wrong thing. And you can stop the tracking and kind of realign it and adjust it and, you know, adjust keyframes manually if need be and fix it. So preview does uh, have some merit, but for the most part, I'm just going to leave preview off uh, because it's that much faster and I can always just fix it after the fact. And when it gets it right, it's going to save me a ton of time. So that's my second favorite little upgrade is the faster mask tracking. Uh, what would I like to see in this? I would just like to see better mask tracking in general in Premiere, a more accurate system, something that locks on and doesn't let go and is just better. Uh, I would also like the ability to track graphics to a point or something like that. And also the ability to, to better track pen tool masks and like specifically complex edges. Think of like a, like a walk by or a whip pan kind of transition uh, to be able to have a mask follow the edge of a person's leg or a telephone pole or a car that drives by. Something like that would be amazing. Uh, we don't have it yet, uh, but it would be cool to see that stuff at some point in the future. And the last of the new features that I want to talk about is the new freeform view mode. It's pretty cool. Uh, I couldn't quite put it as my number one favorite thing uh, because I don't yet know how much I'm going to use it, but it's something that I can see myself using a lot in the future. Uh, I've got this little video here. There's just some audio that goes with it and the video of the boxer. And of course, on our timeline, we have these other videos with, you know, Train Station Harry and, and all the other stuff. Well, over here in the project bin, this is typically what you would see is your thumbnails or maybe uh, you're somebody who prefers the list view and you're seeing something like this. That's great. But there's now this third view mode called freeform view mode. And it looks pretty straightforward in terms of, okay, what am I looking at? Well, here's what's cool about it. It, it kind of is like a full-on storyboard. At least that's how I can see myself
myself using it. So I'm going to hover over the project panel and hit my tilde key and make it full screen. Now here with Freeform, you can just click and drag stuff wherever you want it to be. So I can say, look, this is my sequence. So you got the sequence uh, icon there. I'll just drag this and put it here because uh, I know, well, you know, I'm actually going to put it way off here to the right. And then I can say like, okay, for the boxing shot, I know I need the boxing shot. And then we have our voiceover for the boxing shot. And we have that music that also goes with the voiceover for the boxing shot. Cool. Uh, I want train station Harry here and he is going to be overlaid. Like he's going to be talking about this motorcycle ride that they did in Kiev or whatever. I don't know. Uh, and then uh, it's it, the conversation is beginning with him, uh, his son and his uh, his daughter-in-law. They, they take long walks on the beach or something. Uh, and his son's doing that to get away from his industrial grinder uh, job, whatever. I don't know. We just built a little story, right? And then that has something to do with this boxing somehow. Who knows? The point is you can set up something like, let's say you're vlogging and you're building out an entire story. You could take and stack and adjust your B-roll as you see fit and say, I know I want this shot to go with that shot. And oh, by the way, you don't like it to be staggered like this. You can do something like right click and say, hey, uh, just align this to the grid and quickly turn it into this kind of thing. Or if this isn't the way you want the grid to be and you want even more control over this, you can right click again and reset to grid. And this basically is going to do something like, you know, stacking everything back in the name order. But let's say we're taking out the boxing stuff, right? And we want to group this stuff together or kind of stash it together. You can alt drag video clips and snap them together. So by alt drag, you can see how it just clicks and snaps right into place. Then I can select all three and move them together wherever I want them to go. So that's pretty cool. You can command drag clips to drag out a copy. That's pretty cool. There's just a lot of visual stuff you can do here. You can also hold down the command or control key and scroll up or down with your mouse wheel to zoom in or out. Or if you have a trackpad, you can just pinch and zoom kind of like I'm doing here and now. And uh, navigating around with the trackpad again is just taking two fingers, a multi-touch deal, and just kind of scrolling around as you see fit. So there's a lot of options here uh, that you can do. You can select a clip, you can right click on the clip, and all the way down at the bottom you have clip size. And this is just the size of the thumbnail. So do you want something to be more important? Make it extra large. And then we could hold down alter option, we could click this to the side of the audio, maybe that's the way we want to work with this. So it's a really, really cool, very visual way to begin assembling your video before you get to the timeline. And there's still one more thing I want to show you about this uh, that I think is really, really cool. So when you are working with your video, usually when you're shooting something like b-roll you got a bunch of junk on the the in and out of the video so maybe we're looking at this and we know we just want to get this right hook he's throwing at the bag so we can hover over the video clip until we get to the the shot that we want like right there right everything before that little tick mark that's all kind of junk so we hover over and we just hit the letter i that sets an in point and then we move to maybe he's throwing the right hook right about there and we hit the letter o to set our out point well what's the value of this well if we go through and we quickly in and out like this, the bits of the footage that we want. Let me hit tilde again to re sort of unfull screen that project. Now, when I move and I grab, let me zoom out here with my freeform view mode. When I grab that clip of video, it's only going to drag onto the timeline, the in and out section that I selected, right? Right where he, well, let me just scale it to frame size here. Right before he throws the right hook, he throws the right hook, he finishes throwing the right hook, and the clip disappears. So it'll save you a ton of time in terms of trimming in and out clips, ripple deleting stuff like that. You'll just have to go in and make your little fine tune adjustments, but to quickly be able to lay it all out here in the free form view, I think is going to be huge. I'm really excited about that. I think it's going to be an amazing, amazing future. The only reason again that I haven't made it number one is because I see it as something in theory, it seems amazing. Um, but when it comes to me actually using it for my projects, I have to see how much I'm actually going to use it. Uh, but it's the feature that I'm most excited about. I think it's pretty cool. Now, what would I like to see that would make this better? Well, I would like it to be better optimized because of all these live thumbnails and everything else. It can get a little sluggish in here. Like this is 4K footage and it can just get sluggish in here. That would be nice to see. I think it would be cool if when you dragged video clips, auto snapping, like snapping was just the default. I didn't have to hold down command or not command, uh, alter options. See, that's just, you know, I forget that kind of stuff. So it'd be nice if I didn't have to do that. If it worked kind of like the panels work in the workspace where you just drag it, it gets close and then it snaps. That would be kind of cool. Um, on top of that, I haven't really, uh, I haven't, again, I just haven't used it enough to really go through and find other things that I would like to see them do better. I think they did a pretty nice job with it and I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, I just think it's going to be a really, really nice thing to have.
Well, that's it for this one, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, check out my video about the J-Cut in Premiere Pro. It's such a professional, such an easy, uh, such an awesome little transition. So simple, you're going to wonder why you haven't done it a million times before. And it's just going to give your videos this nice, polished feel to them. Uh, it's just really great. You can check it out by clicking on the link here on the screen. And uh, just a quick reminder that I love all the people here that watch these videos, but I especially love people like you who watch all the way till the end. Get it, got it, good. Good. Nathaniel Dodson, I'll catch you in the next one.